Before we keep going on, uh, Jonathan, I'm happy to report that I just read that uh, Barron has tested negative for the virus. So we're very happy to hear that. Sure. Anything that's good news about children makes me happy. 100%. But let's, let's switch this for a second. Yeah. I want to talk about voter suppression because I've been reading some horrible things. Texas Governor Abbott, for instance, announced that he's cutting ballot drop-off locations in Texas in just one, one per county. Now, we know Texas is a huge state. One, one county in Texas is over 6,000 square miles. That would be very difficult to get to unless you live right on top of that uh, ballot box. Also, another state, Pennsylvania Republicans, they want to set up what they call an election integrity committee. What is that about? Are they trying to stop people from voting in this rather, you know, it's almost like a, 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 legal, a legal way, you know, or some kind of uh, a way that is justified at, at the state level. What can we do about it? This is outrageous as far as I'm concerned. Well, the, the Texas case is, is especially concerning because uh, the, the counties had gone forward and the counties, you know, conducting their own their own elections. Many of them had put in uh, uh, up to 20 different locations uh, to, to where people could could hand, drop off in person their mail in ballot. Uh, and he issued this proclamation saying only one per county. Uh, as you mentioned, there are some huge counties in Texas. I'll give you one, Harris County, which is where Houston is, uh, has 1,700 square miles, uh, but also has nearly 5 million people. So imagine all of those. I mean, you know, imagine how crowded that one location would be and how far some people would have to travel uh, for that one location. It, it, it really is, you know, right. and, and, and the thing is, he said it was because of security. He said it was because they, they needed the, the, to be able to secure those ballot locations. Local officials, uh, many of them said that they had no problem securing uh, uh, those drop-off locations. So it's hard to say what it is. Yeah. And, and you can raise legitimately the question, is this attempt to make it harder for people to vote? It shows you, Jonathan, well, John, some, that Texas uh, is in play this year, oh. you know, that they're worried about it. That's um, what it tells me. Perhaps. John, Sorry. some say that the Trump campaign, some say that the Trump campaign will specifically try to suppress the African-American vote. And uh, this happened in 2016, we, we have found out. In fact, mm -hmm. President Obama, in a rare public statement, did address that particular issue. Now, what are you hearing about this? Well, this is a concern that you are hearing. Uh, Democrats are, are, are raising this concern. Of course, uh, the Trump campaign absolutely denies any any of this. Uh, but when you look at these, when you look at what is happening state by state, you mentioned what was going on in, in, in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, the Republicans say this is all about ensuring the integrity of the vote, making sure uh, that, that only one vote per person is cast and, and that eligible voters are the only ones voting. But there's so much crazy stuff coming out. I mean, the, uh, uh, you know, the president was, the White House was confronted yesterday about this notion, the president saying that ballots with his name on it were thrown into a river. And somebody at the press briefing yesterday asked a very good question, who is they and where is this river? And the bottom line is the river doesn't exist. It didn't happen. It, it, it's just made up. Well, President Trump has called for private citizens to show up to the polls to oversee things. But I want to be clear that there are official poll watchers. Break yes. this down for us. Who are these official poll watchers? How do they get chosen? And what is their role? Well, you know, I was out at Fairfax County of uh, Virginia where there was a lot of early voting going on yet, just, just yesterday. And uh, you see uh, local volunteers uh, who do this election after election. Many of them are senior citizens. We've all seen them when we've gone to vote. These are, these are good people. These are great Americans. These are public servants. They are there. They're, they're, they're always represented both parties. Uh, they, 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 check, uh, you know, they check the names off. They make sure that everything goes according to plan. I was really encouraged, by the way. This was early voting in the state of Virginia. And uh, there was a line really as far as the eye could see. Uh, people were patiently waiting, socially distanced, uh, virtually everybody there wearing a mask. And a lot of them saying that maybe they would have voted by mail, but with all the hubbub, they wanted to be absolutely sure that their vote was going to be counted. So they were going down there and patiently waiting online and, and casting their vote in person. So before we let you go, I just want to say that Vice President Pence has also tested negative. So we're happy about Vice that. I want to Vice say President thank you Pence. to Jonathan Carl. Thank you. Yes. Vice President Pence, Ivanka right. Trump, uh, Jared Kushner, they, they've all tested negative uh, as of this morning. That's right.
But Rona McDaniel, I believe, was positive, yes? The, the, the chair of the RNC yes. tested positive, correct. Right, that's right.